All right, so we've got some people coming in. Thank you guys for showing. Thank you girls for showing. Um, so as I'd like to just kind of remind everybody for our meetups, um, you know, as you join, please do mute yourself. Um, that should be automatic, but sometimes uh, some people tend to like unmute themselves. So keep your, um, you know, uh, Zooms muted unless you have a question. Uh, for now though, like if you do want to introduce yourself, you can. Uh, we have probably like five minutes or so to kind of do introductions for everybody. And uh, just to uh, reintroduce myself, I'm Vijay. I'm the main host for JavaScript LA. And we have Nim uh, Greenwald today from Kin, Kintone, as well as some of the support staff, including Genji and William from Kintone as well. And then Christine Chin from uh, be my app. Be my, my, be my app. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. If you feel like, uh, you know, introducing yourself today, just go ahead. Um, nothing special. Just, you know, break the ice a little bit. Tell us about yourself, where you're from, and uh, what you're here for. Hi, I'm Ramon. I'm here to check out what this is about. Perfect. Sort and sweet. Uh, where are you from, Ramon? Uh, I'm in LA. Um, I'm a tutor for coding bootcamp. And I've never actually done data visualization. So I'm curious about how you guys do it. Excellent. Um, Nim and uh, anybody else, you know, feel free to jump on if you want to add to anything. Sure. Well, uh, VJ, thanks for having me. Thanks for having us. Uh, this is the second time that we're working together. And, uh, you know, if it's if the first time was any any indication, uh, we're going to have a lot of fun uh, together. So pleasure to be working with you again. And hello to everyone. Um, my name is Nim. I will be um, your, uh, your, your guide today on this uh, data visualization project with no servers. Um, and I hail from uh, the fine city of Berkeley, California, um, originally from the East Coast. And uh, I'm just, just delighted to to be with you all, I'm glad you know we could we could get together under any circumstances, um, and I'm uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to to your participation today. Uh, so Vijay, thanks for kicking it off, um, and uh, yeah, let's keep going. Like, like, who are you? Where are you from? Why are you here? What's your favorite animal? Animal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've uh, I've discovered over the uh, over the, the the quarantine time that I've become a plant person, not an animal person. So I'm a little bit cheating, but uh, but uh, the uh, I bought a lime tree, and that's currently my favorite plant. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So you know, I just uh, wanted to add to anybody um, you know kind of listening. I know like a lot of people are still shuffling in and you know trying to figure out like. Um, you know what it's all about, but I do want to just again iterate. Like, if you're a newbie, uh, feel free. If you're shy, you can also introduce yourself in the chat. That's totally fine. Um, you can do a quick text message, and we'll be looking at that from time to time. As well as you know, if you have a question for the staff, for Kintone, for Nim, or myself, you can also shoot a question in there. And from time to time, we'll occasionally like take a look at what those questions are and reply to you. Um, so I'm just going to open it up again. Uh, feel free, anybody right now, like if you want to just unmute yourself, you can and introduce yourself. Hey everybody, I'm Dana. Uh, I've come to several of these things in the past. I don't know if you guys can hear me right now. Uh, good, yeah, you excellent. Are. You're uh, doing great. And uh, I'm happy to join you all in this uh, quarantine while uh, I have nothing to do, so uh, <laughs> I'm really excited about today. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, uh, this is a great way to, you know, spend your quarantine. In fact, um, that was kind of like something that Nim and I were kind of talking about beforehand. Um, you know, like what projects have you been working on? What kind of things have you been doing to keep yourself busy during the quarantine? So uh, I don't know, like I've been just sort of like learning a whole bunch a lot about servers 
And um, I even started reading this book about um, how Google was formed. And, uh, you know, like back in the day, they used to like buy like these cheap refurbished computers and then just, uh, <laughs> you know, put as much data onto it and then stuff as much refurbished computers into like your know, room. And then uh, eventually that sort of became the cloud and they just had like a whole bunch of redundant information. And they were like, we're computer experts. So, you know, uh, we can make these computers work and we can make it really easy to like share stuff between, you know, our company. So I got inspired by that a little bit and I started looking for cheap like Android devices. <laughs> You know, especially like those fire tablets they can get for like 35 bucks or whatever cheap phones. And like, I just now have been like making everything of mine like um, redundant. So I don't have to, you know, like say, oh, I have only one machine that can be a computer for me. Like literally anything in my house that can be a computer. And that makes it really easy. Like as I'm recording this, you know, Zoom presentation today, um, it's on a separate device. And it's independent of my main computer, so it frees up my main computer for CPU, which is awesome. Are you running a cluster on different like tablets and stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's all just coming together. Like you know, I spent like the last three months just. I'm no expert by any means at, at AWS or any stuff, but I just been like playing around with it a whole bunch and. Um, I guess like the way I kind of keep myself going is by like making a whole bunch of promises for my company and then saying, yeah, I'm going to get this done. And then it's on me to really actually get it done. So I like that little, uh, you know, feet to the fire, extra pressure. It makes me actually study because otherwise I wouldn't. <laughs> nice, nice. Nothing like a, uh, an external goal to your employer to get you uh, moving. Yeah. Seriously, but it's all fun. How's everybody doing tonight? Hey, who's, uh, who is that? <laughs> That's Joey, nice to meet you. Thought hey I'd Joey, say. thanks for joining us. Welcome Joey. I'm, to I'm totally digging that background. All right, <laughs> the matrix. <laughs> what is it, a little binary back there? No. Yeah, I got, a, got some zeros and ones coming at me. I wanna see Joey, where's Joey? Let's see, I look on my phone. So cool. Anybody else want to say hi? Yeah, please do. Hi, um, I'm Quasar. Can you hear me? Yeah, thanks for joining us, Quasar. Yeah, um, I've been to a few JavaScript LA events before. Um, I, I mean, uh, recently I've just been into 3JS and trainer programming. Nice. GLSO. Fun stuff right uh, there, man. Yeah. Oh, I remember using 3JS in my uh, in my coding boot camp. <laughs> we were doing were like a, a visualization tool. Yeah, we were doing like a 3D song visualizer. Oh, that's pretty rad. Yeah. It's awesome. Man, you guys are so talkative. I know it might, you know, you might have opinions to the contrary, but typically, you know, well, not typically, but in, in some of the other groups that we, we do presentations with, they're a lot quieter. So I'm just really, really happy that you guys are, uh, you know, turning your videos on, yeah, turning your, you know, unmuting yourselves, saying hello. I'm really grateful. Thank you for joining us. For those of you who haven't done that yet, Juan, Camille, Arlette, Jaspal, AZ, AK, Praveen, Bavik, Chris, Alone, um, Frank, Day, No, No, anybody else that I missed, just thanks for being here. Um, VJ, anything else you wanted to to jump in before we uh, before we start rocking and rolling? No, not at all. Um, Christine, if you did want to say something, yes. I want to open it up to you, of course. Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to welcome everyone to this web uh, this meetup. Um, thank you for joining the Build the Data Visualization Project with No Service in Two Hours with Nim. Um, Kintone and JavaScript are co-hosting this visualization workshop. I just want to introduce myself. I'm Christine Chin. I'm actually a project manager with Be My App, and I'm, I've been partnering with Kintone um, on meetups, and so I'm glad to have you guys here. And I just want to do a quick intro of our, play, our players here. So for Kintone, they have 20 years of combined coding experience. Um, we have Will and Genji, who are from Tokyo, on the line also. And then we also have Nim, as you just met. He's from the Bay Area. He's a Kintone evangelist promoting teamwork and low-code solutions. 
Um, they are here today to give back and help out the next generations of coders. Nim will be the speaker for tonight's workshop and Will, Genji, and myself will be answering your questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them on the chat section and we'll be sure to answer them. Um, and while Nim's presenting, um, please keep yourself on mute so you don't interrupt him. Um, and thank you for joining tonight. Thank Excellent. you so much, Christine. Yeah, go ahead, Nim. All right, thanks a lot. So again, I just wanna uh, thank uh, VJ for, uh, for the platform and, uh, and Christine and Genji and Will. These, uh, you know, the, you guys are, you know, in the background uh, doing your thing and, and making it all flow, answering people's questions. Folks, you don't know how lucky you are to have these people on your team tonight. So really, if there's any questions you have, just fire away. And if I'm not gonna be able to answer them, um, any one of these fine people will. Um, let's, uh, let's get into it. So, um, hey, I'm Nim, uh, and uh, I, how, uh, geez, where, I'm, I'm Kintone's technical evangelist. I started uh, my technical evangelism journey um, by, uh, well, my, the engineering part of my te technical evangelism journey by uh, going through a program called uh, Hack Reactor, which was a 14-week uh, boot camp uh, you may have gone through a boot camp. If you did, you know that it can be pretty grueling. If you didn't, I'm sure you had your own crucifix to go through, uh, or maybe you're still going through it. In any case, keep going. And if you did it, great work. Um, I was hired by Kintone a few months after I finished my, uh, my program, and I started off as a sales engineer. What is a sales engineer, you may ask? Well, um, if you ever need to buy software and you call up a company, and you say, hey, I wanna buy your product, and you're talking to a salesperson, um, you will eventually get into a conversation about your requirements. And if your requirements are sophisticated enough, the sales rep will say, hey, those are some really good questions. Let me bring my technical advisor on the phone, and they'll be able to help you see if this is a great fit. I'm, I was that guy, the technical advisor in the industry. They're called sales engineers. You may also hear them known as uh, solutions engineers. Um, and I was pretty good at it. I really love it. Uh, I was promoted, I became the lead sales engineer, then I ended up managing a team of seven. Um, and after about a year, I shifted into this technical evangelism role where I get to share with folks the possibility of our platform and also really assist them in, you know, in their own growth and development and also solving their own uh, challenging business problems. So um, that's how I got here. And today we're gonna be talking about uh, how to use Kintone to very quickly spin up a data visualization project. So everyone's gonna walk away with a, a kernel of a project that they can start iterating on. Now, why are you like, I wanna make sure that you're, you're, the right butt is in the seat. So um, if you are a front end developer, who wants to spend uh, less time setting up your back end stuff, you wanna concentrate on the UI, the UX, uh, this presentation is for you. If you have other reasons for being here, cool. Uh, just go ahead and pop them in the chat. And if you are in the wrong place, uh, any one of these fine people answering the questions will tell you, hey, you know what? Like, thank you so much for clearing your space, but you know, this isn't for you. I do have a hunch though that everybody here is in the right place. This is what we're gonna talk about today. First, I'm gonna give you a quick introduction to Kin Tone. The reason why I'm doing that is because um, it's really important to get the context of, of how it all works um, before we you know, really dive into the nitty gritty and do the fun stuff. I need to, we need to be on the same page about how to get to where you need to get to, why do things look the way that they do. Um, and so that's why we're gonna talk about Kintone first. And uh, in the process, we're gonna create a Kintone app. We'll talk about what an app is at that, at that point in time and, and how to make one. Um, and then we will be using the AmCharts library which is a data visualization library. We will be uh, spinning up an AmCharts uh, visualization on Kintone, and then we will call the REST APIs from Kintone. Uh, when, after we do all of that, you'll then have the basics uh, within two hours to, uh, to, to build on it from there. Um, I also want to uh, temper your expectations. Um, what you're gonna come out with is like a foundation. It's a building block to iterate on. You're not gonna have like a really, um, beautiful and fine-tuned final project. That's not the intention of this of, of our time here today. So I want to make sure that you're uh, calibrating your expectations appropriately. All right, so let's talk about Kintone. What is Kintone? Well, uh, Kintone is a 
no code, low code cloud platform for teams to easily share and collaborate on their data efficiently. So what do I mean by that? Um, well, actually, no, you know what? Let's not talk about that for a moment. What I mean, so, so it's a platform where you can very, if, if, whether you're uh, very technically savvy, which if you're on this call, you either are or are intending to become technically savvy, um, or you're a total newbie, or maybe you're even allergic to technology, and maybe you have folks in your lives that are allergic to technology or close to it. Kintone allows you to um, track the stuff that you need in the day-to-day -day business, business operations very uh, quickly and easily, and then to also talk about it. So you've got your data and the conversations about your data in one place. Now, the main building block in Kintone is an app, and you can imagine an app as like a spreadsheet or a table in a database with more power, more flexibility. Uh, you can do a lot more cool stuff with an app than you could do um, with the same amount of ease in a spreadsheet. So what you need to know about apps is that they're very easy to create. Uh, you can see it over here in, the, um, in this little uh, running animation over here. What, you, what we're doing is you could literally drag and drop fields from the, from the left-hand side of the page to the right-hand side of the page uh, to create uh, the fields that you want, no coding necessary. What's, what's good about that for you as a coder is that you, that leaves you more time uh, to spend on the more creative aspects of your project. And what's also neat about apps and the reason why they're, uh, they, they're more accessible and, and more interesting to us uh, than you know, Excel spreadsheets is that they are customizable with client-side JavaScript. So you could create a JavaScript file on your computer, you can upload it, into Kintone, and then it, Kintone will execute that code on your browser, uh, and that code, allow, that code is a really, uh, it, what it allows for is a very big sandbox uh, to play, to play it. Now, um, I touched briefly before on no code and low code platforms. What do I mean by that? These are industry terms. If you're familiar with them, great. If not, great. What you need to know about a no code platform is it's, an, it's, it's a platform that's designed uh, with business users in mind, non-techie people that allows them to build stuff to do their job easier. And a low-code platform is um, geared more toward developers to help them do the coding that matters and speed up the stuff that doesn't so you don't need to get in a terminal or in a, or in a code editor for everything. Um, these platforms allow you to, to, to speed up your build process by um, making some of the more, some of the more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just some of the building stuff easier to do without needing to, to code everything out. Uh, the reason why it's low code is because there is some code that's necessary in order to build out what you're looking for. Now, no code and low code is a part of a spectrum. Um, Kintone is actually both a no code and a low code platform. So um, if you're a business user, you're allergic to technology, you spin up an app real quickly, you get, it to, you get it to do what you need it to do so you can track what you're looking for and you can collaborate with your, with your teammates on those things like, I don't know, invoices, sales leads, um, uh, job applicant tracking, lots of stuff. And as a developer, you can spin up these apps really quickly and then iterate on them with the much more interesting uh, JavaScript uh, customizations, or if you have more exacting requirements, it allows you to um, to build to to customize with with that client side JavaScript. So, what does this have to do with no servers? Well, because Kintone is essentially acting as like a lightweight database with a GUI on top of it, um, you don't need you know a server running in AWS or a cluster or, I mean, you just you can um, basically turn Kintone into the server that runs your database. You can concentrate on uh, the front end work, uh, and then you can also use Kintone's GUI to, to create your databases really quickly. Okay, so we talked about high level what a Kintone app is. Let's go into a little bit more detail. So I mentioned a Kintone app, you can imagine it as a spreadsheet 
or a database with more flexibility and with more power. And so you can, you can in a very much the same way like a spreadsheet or a database is just a tool that you can fill with any content. It's the same thing with a Kintone app. You can create an app that tracks, you know, um, your, your activity with prospects and customers, expense reports. Um, you can create an app that tracks your, um, your inbound marketing leads. There are a lot of options, you know, and even if you're not, you're not in the business world, but you want to use Kintone to track your to-dos uh, or uh, board games or like the movies that you've seen or what you've had for lunch, it's the same deal as a database. Now, at this point, I want to make sure that everybody has signed up for a free Kintone developer license. And the reason is, is that um, in order for you to follow along with this project, um, you got to make sure that you've signed up and you've got this, this license. This license is good for a year. It gives you your own, what we call a subdomain, which you can, it's, it's an environment for you to build apps on. Um, if you have not yet done so, please um, sign up for a free Kintone developer license. And if you have, then what I would really appreciate you doing is just um, in the uh, participants, um, in the participants tab on, um, on Zoom, go ahead and raise your hand if you've already done this. That'll help me know how long I should be kind of pausing on this page to, you know, allow people to take care of business. So again, um, in Zoom on the participants tab, there is a button called raise hand. Please raise your hand if you have already signed up for a free Kintone developer license. Okay, thanks a lot, AK. Keep your hand up, please. Luigi, thank you. Joey, great, 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 great. Okay, so I'm going to take a minute or I'm going to take about two minutes. Folks, uh, please go ahead and, uh, and sign up for that Kintone developer license now. So that we can all uh, follow along together and I'll give you guys some hands on work. And then when oh, you're done, please raise your hand. Sorry, yeah, I'm just going to say it's only going to take a minute or so to fill out the form and you'll get the email with the uh, Kintone developer license. Thank you, Will. VJ, do folks have the ability to, um, to, to, to do anything else besides raising their hands? Can they mark yes or no or go slower or go faster? Do, they, do you have those, uh, those buttons enabled? Um, I'm not sure. So the other thing that I was trying to figure out here was, um, you know, like that feature but, um, that you were talking about. But I think like, you know, to keep it simple, maybe just like have people, you know, enter <laughs> comments in the chat you know because i think like that might be like the best way to kind of get people i know i have a kintone license as well but i was trying to figure out how to raise my hand and i got okay folks if you don't know how to raise your hand if you're stuck over there um and if you have any other questions if i'm going over something that you don't understand please uh type that in the chat now to raise your hand what you're going to do is zoom has this menu bar it's this black menu bar that uh, it's either docked to the top or the bottom of your screen. And there is, a, um, there is a button on there that says participants. And what you'll do is you'll click on that button participants. And then you'll see a list of all, you know, however many of us there are. And you'll see a button over there on the bottom of that, uh, on the bottom of that pop of that popped up window. And it'll say, raise hand. That's how you raise your hand. Now to lower your hand, once you hit raise hand, the button will turn into lower hand. Okay. Okay, great. 
We'll take another minute or so. Hi, can you hear me? I sure can. May I ask a question? You absolutely may. Okay, my name is Alan. Um, I, I want to engage a little bit your sales uh, uh, cap uh, capability. Can you sell us on the platform? Uh, is, it, is it running on mobile? Is it restricted to your container? Uh, is it like, because I, I mean, the freebies is nice, but you know, I, I want to know what is uh, around the corner, you know, how useful it would be and, and what, what is your expectation? This is obviously not a open source project. That's right. That's right, Alon. So um, I'll, I'll do my best to speak to that briefly. Uh, you know, I'm certainly happy to give you like a, a more targeted bulleted version. Um, during the break, um, but just very briefly, Kintone is, is available on, on mobile as well. It's primarily targeted toward, again, toward um, business operations cases. Like you've got teams, you've got groups of people who are managing workflows. Um, they're tracking uh, whatever they need to track. Could be invoices, could be sales leads. If you're a developer, maybe you know, you're, you're tracking um, you know, sprint progress. Um, and you need a platform for communication as well. So in lieu of, you know, searching of, you know, hundreds of messages on Slack or over email um, and having, you know, a whole bunch of files in a whole bunch of different places, what Kintone really enables you to do is to uh, track all of that information and have all those conversations in one organized place. Um, and yes, um, we've got like feature parity on a mobile app. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes. Um... I don't want to spoil the party, but I would, if you don't mind, how much it costs. Sure. Yeah. So, um, Kintone is the, the, the licensing scheme is, uh, $24 per user per month with a minimum of five users. And, um, it's geared again toward, toward teams, um, that want to, uh, not just, you know, put their data somewhere, but also make it easy to collaborate on their data. Uh, comparable price points would be like Salesforce, which is priced at like sixty dollars per user per month. Um, so you know, in the on the scheme of things, it's it's fairly inexpensive in this um, in this space. So since this is an all-in-one uh, package that it encompasses, um, the like graphs and stuff that it's capable of generating for us is based on the data that we provide it. So whatever we basically feed it, it'll basically give us different options for what we can visualize. I mean, that kind of how that works or yeah. is that kind of like, cause you said it's kind of like a sandbox, right? That's right. That's right. You're, well, I'm basically giving, I'm, I'm basically giving you guys like a bunch of Legos to play with today. Sounds right. Sweet, man. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, I'm very surprised that we're going into the sales stuff today. I find that uh, in these developer meetups, people are very like not interested, but in any event, happy to talk about it. If you want to talk about it more, we can do it online. Uh, I also, again, want to be respectful for many coders and developers. They, they want to be as far away from the sales stuff as possible. So I want to honor that, but also at the same time, make sure that I get your questions answered, okay? Cool. Yeah, and Alon, does that answer your question too? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take that as a yes, Alon. Okay, folks, if you have not yet uh, signed up, then too bad. You're, you buckle up. You're, you're going to be in uh, listen-only mode, I suppose. For everybody else, thank you very much. Um, and uh, let's – and also, why not at this point, anybody who is participating, but, it, but just, just go ahead and raise your hand anyway. What that's going to help me do is see – kind of give me a bead on um, how many hands I should be looking for to make sure that we move on to the next segment. Um, so if you haven't raised, <laughs> everybody go on and raise your hand again. We just uh, lowered them all. Um, everybody, 
everybody who's listening, go and raise your hand. If you don't raise your hand, I'll know to not pay attention to your like um, your speed as we go through today. Um, that's the that's the uh, impact. All right, great. I got a pretty good pretty good sense in it. So everybody else who's here, um, you know, maybe you're recording this session. Maybe you're just you're you're in and out. That's okay too. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and lower all these hands. Let's move on. If you haven't yet logged into Kintone, please go ahead and do that right now. Um, you would, it'll be, you know, HTTPS colon slash slash whatever you put for your subdomain dot And then you'll log in. And those, the details of your domain uh, and your login information should be available to you via email. I hope that at this point everybody has received that information. If you haven't, just go ahead and drop that in the chat. Genji and Will will take care of you. The first thing that you see when, you're, when you log in is going to be this blue screen that will allow you to choose between the administration and uh, Kintone. This is, like a, this is a screen that the, the administrators will see. And you'll click on the Kintone button on the top left. And then you'll be taken into a page where you'll see your portal. Congratulations, welcome to Kintone. What you see front and center uh, is the environment that, excuse me, you and your users will see when you log in. Um, just kind of some brief navigational elements over here. There's this uh, place where you can put in announcements um, that which you as an administrator can edit and everybody would see those announcements. They'll see the same announcements. Uh, to the right, there's an area called spaces. And you can imagine a space as, a, as like a fenced in way to organize conversations. So um, marketing people tend to, track, tend to want to track the same basket of things and talk about the same basket of things. So you might create a marketing space and put marketing apps in it like uh, survey results or um, in, incoming leads or uh, upcoming events. Um, that would all go in a space. Underneath that, you've got the apps, and apps are the foundation of Kintone, and they're going to be what we're going to be uh, using as a building block to play with today. What I'd like you to do is create your first app, and to do that, what you're going to do is you'll be in that apps pane, that, that little uh, uh, rectangle, and uh, you'll click on the plus sign. That's going to take you to a page where you can create your first Kintone app. And what we're going to do is we're going to create one from scratch. So go ahead, click on that plus sign at the uh, right-hand side, middle of the page, the apps uh, section. And then uh, you'll be taken to the uh, new app page. You'll, you'll click on that button that says uh, create app from scratch. Now from there, you've got this uh, page in front of you, our form builder. And that's where you can name, a, uh, name your new app and drag and drop fields. What I, what I ask you to do at this point is uh, just simply drag and drop a text field and a drop down from the left-hand side of the page to the right-hand side of the page. The text field is going to be in the uh, second column. That's all the way at the top. It says text. And then the drop down field is um, also that second column, um, about five or six down from there, where that red arrow is in the animation just right now. And what you can do is you can hover over these fields, and in the top right section of, of the field, there will be this gear wheel. You'll click on the gear wheel, and it'll bring you to the settings for that field. And that's when you'll want to change the name and add some op options over here. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to add a um, uh, board game DB. So we'll, we'll add a field uh, for name and we'll add a, uh, a drop down for uh, type. And then we can go ahead and put in some options over there. Uh, maybe abstract uh, would be a type and uh, area control is a type and uh, drafting is a type. And that'll be enough. Once you do that, you can um, click on that green save button on the left hand side of the page and once you do that then you can uh, look at the top right hand side of the screen there's a blue button 
called Activate App. This is going to basically move our app from the development environment. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to skip the staging environment and it's going to move it straight into what we would consider production. All right, once you've created your first app, go ahead and raise your hand. Might take a few minutes, so no need to rush. Yeah, could you repeat the three categories again? It was uh, abstract, area control, and what was the other one? I believe it's drafting. Is that right, Genji? Okay. Sorry, I'm juggling two computers. I got no worries. On one computer and working on the other. I totally understand. And then uh, don't forget to raise your hand when you're done. So great, Joey, John, Day, Quasar, Luigi. VJ, Ryan, excellent. Since it has like the built-in like communication availability, does it kind of have like a built-in like gyro board or like Trello board that you can use for like teamwork? Oh, you mean like a Kanban board? Yeah. Um, it, there is not a built-in Kanban view, uh -huh. but actually that would be like a cool project. Um, like if you wanted to tackle as like a, as part of like a customization yeah. there there's um in our japanese market we have a kanban plugin that looks pretty cool um but yeah it's it's certainly doable okay. sweet yeah it just seems like something to ask because i mean it's pretty awesome what it looks like so far i mean i like how it's pretty practical i kind of like the drag and drop it makes things really easy man do you want to <laughs> come to all of my presentations Dude, I'm down. Send me the email, <laughs> we'll, bro. <laughs> we'll, I'll send you a personalized invitation. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a. Uh, it, there's a bunch of different ways to view your data. You can view it as a as a list, kind of like what you'd expect. If we're calling it a table in a database or a spreadsheet, you should be able to see Sweet. it in a table. Um, you've got a detail view where you can drill down into a specific record, and um, and that's where you'll also be able to talk about it with other people by tagging them. Um, you've also got a, uh, a count like a, like a, a native calendar view, um, and you've got native graph and chart functionality, but what's cool about Kintone, and this is, this is really why we talk about it to, to folks like you is you've got what we call a custom view, which is basically just like, uh, an, like an empty HTML div basically, um, and that you could put anything, essentially anything that you want in there and hook in some scripting behavior with, with your uh, uploaded executable JavaScript code. So you can, I mean, hell, Will has made space invaders in Kintone. Oh, I know he's pretty yeah. proud of that. Um, it's cool. very, very flexible. All right. Uh, thank you very much for all of those who raised your hand. We're going to keep going. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to go into that app. If you haven't done so already, you're going to click on that bo new board game DB app, uh, and you'll be taken to what we were, what we call the list view. Okay, now your list view is likely empty; doesn't have any records in it. Um, if you wanted to add a new record, what you could do is, um, oops, where is it? What you could do is. Uh, Right over here in this area, you've got that plus sign. This will allow you to add a new record. Um, if, you needed to, if you needed to go into the app settings, which is where you were when you were doing the dragging and dropping, plus there's some other cool power, uh, power tools over there, you click on the, these app settings. What you basically want to know is, you know, your data is going to go here, front and center, and um, you can edit it in line over here. And if you needed to drill down into a specific record, you would click on these blue uh, page thumbnails. Uh, just another thing really quickly is over here in this blue rectangle at the top left portion of the page, this is where you can select views. Since maybe you've got an events app and you don't need to see all of the events, maybe you just wanna see upcoming events or maybe you just wanna see like show me you know, the last rolling month of events, you'd be able to create views that are specific to that. 
Kintune has some native graph and chart functionality. You could also create native graphs and charts with that, but um, we wanted to spice things up a little bit for you guys. So we're, uh, we're bringing in an external library and we're gonna do some heavier lifting. Now I, was ta I talked a lot about how you can collaborate with, with Kintone. Um, if you've ever worked for a company where you're like passing you know, spreadsheets back and forth and you have you know, like a version control nightmare going on, or if you're storing, a, if you're basically using email as like a shared file system, um, Kintone allows you to just leave hell is the short way to put it. It allows you to get everybody on the same page you know, if you're tagging someone, they can, you know, if they've, if they've configured their mobile app appropriately, they can receive push notifications, um, you know, or they'll go receive an email, it'll bring them into the app, everything is like all in one place. It's just a lot easier to do the work part of work, it makes it less worky, if I can say it like that. Now, here's the deal with no code. No code limits you to the native features of the platform. It's really you know, up to the limit of what you can configure. Um, so the benefit of, of being able to move into a low code uh, environment is we can start doing some much more interesting things. So for example, if we wanted to take the data that we put in and uh, visualize it with a JavaScript library. So actually what I'm gonna ask you to do is, um, no, actually we don't need to do that, my bad. What I'm gonna ask you to do is take a short break. Why don't we take the next 10 minutes and uh, if you need to take care of yourself, bio break, food, go right ahead and do that. We're going to be here. The time is now uh, 7.41 Pacific time. We'll start again at 7.51. Uh, you can go ahead and break right now. And if you are still with me, um, why don't you uh, un my, like, uh, unmute yourself and uh, you know, let's chat. How are you guys uh, taking care of yourselves with all this COVID stuff happening? Good, I'm staying um, busy. <laughs> hey, good. Everything's great. Not really. <laughs> Not really? <laughs> can you hear me okay? I'm using my laptop. So there I'm you great. are, yeah, we can hear you a lot better. Yeah, Sweet. yeah, now it's better. I got canned from my company, but I'm rebounding, so I'm not tripping. I'm really sorry. I'm both sorry to hear that and glad that it sounds like you're, you know, pretty grounded about the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it was what it was. Honestly, like, we kind of knew what was going on in my office before it kind of hit, like, a few months in advance. So, like, everybody was kind of, like, on that whole, if you got a sniffle of a sniffle, don't come in kind of, like, you know, vibe. And then the way everything just kind of spiraled, it really sucks because it was a startup. And uh, I was actually like second round of engineers that was hired there. So we we're fully seated and funded. But once everything happened, I guess prior to me getting hired, there was already like uh, production problems with the development of the application. So board members weren't really too happy on the progress. So I was kind of hired on board to kind of fix things. And I did, but it was kind of like too little, too late. And then once all this COVID hit down and kind of like stopped kind of abruptly everything, it kind of like really put everybody in like a pickle and they just started like dropping everybody like flies. But what it's cool. What kind of engineering do you do? Uh, iOS. I do native iOS development, but I'm kind of versatile. So I'm kind of flexible. So whatever they kind of throw at me, I kind of adapt to, but I kind of specialize in uh, augmented reality. So I'm spending a lot of time working with like AR core, AR kit, uh, Unity, uh, it's kind of like playing with different various like uh, AR apps basically that I'm building. So I work a lot with like 3D modeling too. So I use a lot of Maya and I do a lot of 3D animation. It's kind of critical, right? You got to have the assets. You can't really make sure, an AR sure. app without the assets. Yeah. What, uh, what kind of projects are you working on? Oh, dude. Well, right now um, I'm actually like signed up for a hackathon that uh, Facebook's having that's going to be pretty much due at the end of the month. And I'm partnered with one other guy and we're working on uh, – Kind of like a, an experience. It's the, the whole synopsis is like better, like the world kind of like help each other. So kind of came up with like this idea of like having like a wishing well where like you run the app and there's like a well and it's kind of like uh, somebody can come up to it and like leave a message. So as you like walk up to the well, uh, it'll basically like you can look into it and you'll see a bunch of like messages that are there. And then it, like if you tap the screen, it'll like vibrate and then it'll pop up like the message someone left and you can give a message, leave a message. 
So it's kind of like, it's just like a basic, like, uh, I guess like a post board or something like that. Where people could, like put sticky notes and stuff. So I'm kind of working on that right now. But other than that, I've worked at like jobs I've had. I've done like facial recognition and I've built like uh, 3D models utilizing uh, the data that we get from like uh, enrolling the people. So like if you run an app, you take a front face picture, side profile, the other side profile, send it to the back end, and then that basically compiles it into like a 3D model that it returns back and then we put into the app through like an AR view. Oh. Hey, Joey, um, you know, TikTok is hiring some AR VR guys. Oh, man, I know it's, it's kind of hot right now, man. The whole the whole trend on that. I'm, I'm kind of like playing it by feel, you know, like sending little feelers out here and there. But I've been staying pretty grounded. You know, I'm trying to finish this hackathon with my buddy Sean and trying to get that submitted and then just working on my own personal projects, you know, trying to get things going. For sure. For oh. sure. Yeah, I'm in the same boat as you i mean i didn't get cam from a company but <laughs> i started looking like the day before quarantine hit and uh yeah it's uh it's uh it's been slow and i've been trying not to like just submit a bunch of applications like crazy because oh yeah no there's way more qualified people out there looking for jobs right now i wouldn't cut yourself short though man it's yeah. just a matter of putting you know honestly on my downtime i do a lot of data structures and algorithms Mm. so like I, like three days out of the week i'm like in meetings for that and kind of running that just you know prepare yourself because at the end of the day you know you got to stay ready because you know if you got an interview coming up man you want to be able to pass the test you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah data structures and algorithms are are really fun but uh right now i'm actually working on um, a uh like an open source project uh Sweet. city of hartford connecticut uh it's it's basically for their upcoming elections. So, um, so you know, it's kind of like a job, but I don't get paid for it. And uh, I'm pretty sure I can get some sweet letters. That's fun letter. stuff though, man. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I, it's mostly fun. Can I back. interject a little bit? Like Go right ahead. some of those thoughts. Um, so uh, I'm still like with my company, right? Um, I'm doing fine, but you know, I always think about everything you guys are saying, like, you know, um, where you could lose your job, you know, the industry is very tough. Um, yeah it's uh you know it's any time could ha it could happen to you so um i always think about like what do i want to keep learning right like i kind of think like while i have the time to do it um i you know i always kind of like just think about like any kind of deficiencies i have and then i just sort of work on those projects and a lot of times too you know i'll look at these jobs that people are hiring for and there'll be a list of things that they'll be looking for. And I'll be like, hmm, I don't know if I have this skill yet, but maybe I could check it out. So for example, like the whole AWS thing, you know, I, I spent like literally the last like, you know, uh, two to three months just really learning AWS because I kept seeing it over and over. Um, and now like I can say that, you know, I've got at least the skill to do some AWS and, um, you know, I added it to like what I'm able to do with, you know, my front end and back end. So um, you just got to keep looking at what the industry is doing um, when you have the job. If you can hold down a job, you know, um, that's like my best advice is just kind of like hold down whatever job you can get and just kind of like work at it, you know, do what you're supposed to do. Um, but at the same time, just kind of like, you know, as you can keep adding something else underneath, because uh, if you do that, then like each time you know, you have to face like a potential let go. It's not as hard to bounce back because it's like, oh, you know, I was working on something else. So the, the open source project that you were saying, that's a really great thing because I feel like, yeah, if you do open source on the side while you're having a regular job, or if you like work, you know, on this Kintone app, like, you know, we're showing you tonight, um, that's just like one more thing you can say that you are able to do rather than, you know, like when you um, you know, have to kind of compete against a whole bunch of other people and say, oh, well, those people are all just super skilled. I'll, there's no way I can ever compete with them. Like, don't ever say that because like that, that will like, that'll make it worse for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So I agree with what you said too. You know, utilize the downtime to work on the skills that maybe you're not so good at. I mean, prime example, exactly. you know, we all know our individual weaknesses and like when we're on the job and we're working, there's always that one quirk that's just like makes your life hell and it's like takes you hours to figure out you know it's like you work on those things then the next job is a breeze you know 
Exactly. You for yeah. that. You hit the nail on the head there. Yeah, yeah. Like, prime example, you know, at one point, I was having a hard time, and I was struggling uh, with, like, uh, delegates and working with, like, uh, delegates and setting the delegate and really wrapping my whole head around that whole uh, workflow and that whole paradigm. But then it's like, once I took a step back and I was able to like just focus on that, like he said, then, you know, that next time I had another job, it was like a breeze, you know, I was able to like blow right through it. Like, no problem. I got this. And it helped me out with everything I did, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. Always, it's always good. I'll, I'll also add, you know, just, just for you guys, right? Like, so I know that we have these meetups, um, but if anybody, you know, who's on the call wants to also practice like doing a meetup, um, you can certainly do that with us. Um, a lot of people who came through the group um, eventually became people who spoke for the group. And then they used this group as a way to kind of platform themselves to get like a better job, including myself. So, um, you know, I, I always say, you know, if you, if there's something you want to like become an expert, it doesn't take that long either too, right? Like a lot of people think, well, I don't really know React or I don't really know Vue. I mean, like, if you have some pressure behind you and you're like, oh, I have to do a meetup next month, <laughs> you'll learn it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'll learn it. I gotta, <laughs> That's for damn sure. I got to say, say that. <laughs> I got to say this, uh, this, this meetup group is some of the just some of the friendliest, most uh, uh, engaging people. So, uh, you know, Vijay, you're doing a really great job of, uh, of just – kind of creating a community over here. Thank you. Thank you. And, yeah. uh, and, I, and, I, and I encourage anybody who's involved to, to really take advantage of that. Yeah, absolutely. If um, anybody has any questions about what I said, uh, feel free to just message me. Um, uh, there's a lot of different ways to get to me, but the best way would be just through the website, javascriptla.net. I'll put in the chat and then um, connect with me via Slack or Discord. Those are the two chat channel that I pay attention to the most. Awesome. All right, 7.52, so we're, uh, I said 7.51. It's now 7.52, let's keep going. Uh, thank you all for, uh, for coming, for, uh, for making, making it out to part two. And uh, what we're gonna focus on in this segment is about uh, displaying AM charts on Kintone. So what is AM charts? mCharts is a uh, it's a programming library. It's available in a uh, in a one or more JavaScript files. It gives you uh, access to a bunch of, uh, of methods uh, and tools that you can use to uh, to build really snazzy, nice charts on the fly, without needing to like build them from scratch. So you've got all sorts of different kinds of charts that are available. Um, you know, if you wanted to, you know, take a look at, I, I, I can't even read that, but this one probably looks like, you know, COVID by state, which is, I'm sure, very interesting, although not, um, not a fun thing to talk about. So I'll just, I'll just point to that and, and keep moving. But anyway, a whole bunch of different nice graphs and charts. Um, you've got a map over here. You've got a, a word cloud over here. It's, uh, it's pretty flexible. And um, typically, the way that you would use AM charts is you would load it up uh, as a script. So, uh, however you do that, if you're running like um, you know uh, NPM, you want to include it in uh, in your packages. Um, if you are uh, referring to it in a script tag in your HTML file, um, and then basically you've got in your HTML file some kind of a, a div that the uh, script behavior hooks into, and what what you do is basically um, in your JavaScript file you'll uh, call out that, that div ID and um, AmCharts will um, automatically, based on your behavior, it'll, sorry, based on what you put in, it'll basically put all of the information that you're telling it to in that div. And what you'll also need to do is define, not just tell it how to behave when it hooks into that div, but you also need to give it data that it can then process um, to show whatever it's gonna show. So that's typically how you do it with front-end JavaScript. So you've got three parts, right? Part one, well, technically four parts, right? Part one is create a hook on the HTML side. Then uh, the JavaScript, you um, 
you point to the you point to the file location in some way you define the chart details and then you define the data in Kintone it's going to work a little bit differently um, you will you have diff various different places to uh, hook into Kintone elements on the platform um, so we're going to use Kintone um, Kintone's API for that basically um, as far as reading the libraries, Kintone has a particular way of uploading or linking to uh, external libraries. We'll also use the data that's inside of Kintone. It's really the chart creation that we do in Kintone. So all that other stuff can just kind of fade into the background. And we're gonna create this kind of a chart. Um, Genji and Will, I'm really sorry, I just forgot the name of this kind of a chart. I think it's a forced directed graph. And what you see yeah, is each correct. one of, nailed it. All right, memory. Um, <laughs> <laughs> each, one of these, uh, each one of these circles represents like a, a, the, the size of, uh, of something and we get to say how big or small those, um, those, uh, those circles are. And then I believe we can actually have them interact with each other. Um, you'll notice that we are going to take up space between the, uh, in your list view, between the, uh, that little blue rectangle where you can change your views and, the, uh, and your data, which you'll see uh, underneath it. So that space is currently not occupied, but we're gonna be putting something in there. Okay, so uh, how do we add AM charts for Kintone? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, create a new Kintone app with some pre-populated data. Now to do that, um, we're gonna give you a CSV. Go ahead and download it from this, um, this link. Please note, uh, I believe all bit.ly links are case sensitive. So you'll need the, the G and the D and the V to be uppercase. Everything else will be lowercase. And once you download that file, you're going to um, click the plus sign on the portal where you could create an app, which you did in the first segment today. And instead of creating an app from scratch, there will be another button over there that'll say, create an app from CSV, create from CSV. And then you'll click continue. I, uh, at this point, I wanna pause and I wanna make sure everybody's downloaded that CSV file. Uh, I believe Genji has also just dropped it in the chat. It's the Marvel Cinematic Universe Films.csv. And again, I'm gonna, and again, what you'll do is you will add a new app. You will uh, add, you'll uh, create from CSV, and then it'll start taking you through some steps. First, it'll make sure it'll 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 ask you to verify that uh, the data is uh, scrubbed and squeaky clean. We've already done that for you. You can just hit that checkbox that says uh, check all, and then you'll hit that blue button that says continue to upload screen. When you continue to the upload screen, that's when you'll you can drag and drop that CSV onto that browse button, uh, or you can hit browse and you can find it. And then once you do that, oops, it'll, uh, what it's going to, what Kintone does once you've uploaded your CSV is it takes a quick look at it and it says, hey, um, what type of fields do you want corresponding to each one of these CSV columns? It's a totally valid question to ask. And uh, Kintone does a pretty good job of guessing. You can leave it as is, it's fine. We don't need to make any changes. But what, you'll notice, what, what you should note is that uh, if you ever need to upload CSVs or Excel files into Kintone, you can pretty reliably, like if you need to add a date field, um, there are certain conditions in which radio buttons or drop downs get automatically created. Um, over here, we've, everything, everything that's default is, is fine. So we'll click on that blue button that says convert. And once we do that, we'll see the, um, we'll, we'll see that app show up in our portal and then we can click on it and we'll see the data there that was already um, in the CSV that we had uploaded. So we basically did two things at once. We created, a C we created a new app from a CSV and then we automatically populated data into it. 
Okay, let's start getting into the interesting stuff. No, you know what? Um, before we do, thanks, Will, you're, you read my mind. Please, everybody, go ahead, raise your hand. Let me know you're following. Yeah, so there are two steps here. One, you need to download the CSV file. And then next is you need to do, upload it to Kintone. Great. Uh, just give me one second. I had to like email it to myself to download since I'm on another computer. <laughs> gotcha, um, gotcha. Yes, uh, there's multiple ways. Um, one, I posted the direct uh, GitHub link as well as I also uploaded the actual file to Zoom chat if anyone is having difficulty with either one. You're the man. Yeah, what jacked me up is I got my Zoom on my main computer and then like ah. the Kintone on a whole nother computer. <laughs> so when I'm following along with you, like, it's kind of like, yeah. Yeah, yeah then it's going to be the struggling. <laughs> now you guys the know. The struggle is real. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is why I split my computers into two different ones. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, just real quick, folks in the chat are asking, what should we name our new app? I, I missed that. And uh, you didn't miss it. I just didn't tell you. You can name it whatever you'd like. The, the data set is um, Marvel Cinematic Universe film. So you can call it movies. You can call it Marvel movies. You can call it Iron Man is greater than Thanos, whatever, whatever you'd like. Ren and Stimpy. You could call it, you could absolutely call it Ren and Stimpy. We should make a data set on the most popular Nicktoons. I, um, we should, we should. I am a fan of Doug. That was my all time favorite Nicktoon, it was Doug. <laughs> Rocket Power. Yeah, I mean, I could see you making a case for Rocket Power. It was solid. Thanos did right. nothing wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Luigi, that's a really great, it's a really great title for an app. Thanos did nothing. Wrong. <laughs> Will, I think we Do should. I convert? What's that? Do I hit convert? You'll hit convert. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Will, we should make an app on our internal, uh, on our internal Kintone environment called Thanos did nothing wrong. <laughs> Just in case anybody searches for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it'll show up as the top app uh, for a little while before anybody creates <laughs> other ones. Of course. <laughs> all right. All right, folks. Um, all of you who are who raised your hands, thank you. I'm going to lower all hands. Thanos 2020, make the universe great again. <laughs> All right, all right, that's what I'm talking about. Man, you guys are fun. I, open invitation for you to just join any and all of our future of our future sessions. We do sessions on you know how to call REST APIs. We do set, we've done a session on like what are promises in JavaScript, how to do promises. Um, not with JavaScript LA, so, but like, I don't know. I don't, uh, Vijay, I think it's okay that I'm like cross pollinating over here. Please tell me if I'm like overstepping my bounds. No, that's fine. Feel free to, again, talk about anything you'd like. You're the All star. Right. All right. Or the show. Great, great. Um, Cross-pollinating. All right. Um, we've, we've, got a, uh, we've got a survey that we'll ask you to fill out at the end. I believe you've got your, you can put in your email address on there. Is that right, Will? Yep, that's correct. Right. All right. So put your email address on there and we'll keep you posted with, with like new stuff that we do. Um, It'll inevitably include Kintone. Like, sorry to kind of cut to the chase. Like, that's it, it'll be cool, cool, cool coding stuff that we do on top of Kintone, um, and it'll be a lot of fun to have you join us. All right. So, how do we add the JavaScript libraries to the app? If you haven't, if you've already skipped ahead, great. Um, if you haven't, you'll click on your new app. You'll go into the app settings. Remember, that's that gear wheel at the top right corner of the page, the one with the white background. You'll be then taken to a page that's got four uh, tabs on it. The one at the rightmost side is called app settings. You'll go click on that app settings tab. And then you'll see three columns. The second column, second option down is gonna say JavaScript and CSS customization. Go ahead, click on that bad boy. And when you do, this is, the, this is the money shot right here. So um, how to upload the JavaScript libraries to your app? Well, 
you can do one of two things. You can download the files and then upload them. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to link to them. So you'll see in this animation where it's at underneath the section that says upload JavaScript for PC. You'll, you'll click on where it says add link and then you're gonna copy and paste these three links. Now, critically important that you add the links in that order because this is where you tell, this is where you tell Kintone how to handle the execution order. Execute order 66 by first putting core.js as your number one spot and then charts.js and then the following uh, link plugins, uh, plugin slash force directed.js core and charts uh, they're going to uh, they're going to give us the ability to interact with uh, am charts um, and they're more typical methods and and, um, and functions um, the force directed graph that's a plugin that we're gonna we're gonna use it's a little bit extra okay go ahead raise your hand if you've done this Great day, John, Luigi. Thank you guys. Thank uh, you folks. Just, I'm still typing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the question. Please. Yeah. Uh, how I, I missed the part. How, which part I should do? Add how how can I add the JavaScript library? I'm in the page with uh, add with the uh, C, CSV uh, zero one Marvel Cinema Universal film. So should I click all apps? You sh you there should be uh so you're in the are you in the portal? Is that right? You see like announcements, spaces. Yeah, I'm in the portal. Apps. Yeah, I'm in the portal. Very good. So you'll now click on your new app, the one that you just created when you uploaded the CSV file. So that's the that's the okay, which is the name, right? Okay. Yeah, the name. That. Yep. And once you do, on the right hand side of the page, in the white background, there's a gray gear wheel. Click on that gray gear wheel and you'll be taken to the app settings. You'll notice, tell me if I'm going too fast, okay? Um, you'll notice there are four tabs. There's um, form, views, graphs, and app settings. And you're going to click on app settings. And once you click on app settings, you'll then be, the, the, the page will show you three columns. In the second column, the second item down will be JavaScript and CSS customization. You'll click mm -hmm. on JavaScript and CSS customization, and then that, that's the page so, where you will uh, upload. Sorry, the so, so you talk about, I just opened the page. You look, I say the response is very slow. So, oh, I see. Okay. Uh, go to the three, uh, three dot, right? Go to the three dot or plus sign. Uh, nope. Next to the three dots, next to the plus sign, there should be a gear wheel. Yes. Okay. Click on the gear wheel. And then, okay. For some reason, this page is response very slow. Probably too many people use it. Or uh, it's very weird. Um, yeah, very slow. So it's, well, I'm not sure if because my computer or because it's, the system running fine all day, but all of a sudden just slow down. So, okay, okay, so I'm on the page. Okay. Now, now you should see three, you should see four tabs. There's yes. form, Home view. Great, yeah. click on app settings. Okay. And let me know when you see three columns. Yeah, I see three columns. The second column, the second one down. JavaScript. Yeah, JavaScript and the CSS customization. You got it, Jason. Okay, good. Thank you. You're and welcome. And then I have to, I have to type the uh, three link. You can copy and paste these links. Um, Genji will go ahead and drop them for you, so you can just. Oh, he already. Ha yeah, Genji already has. If you okay, scroll a little so bit higher so in the on. chat, you'll and you'll add okay. you'll add links one by one, and make sure you do it in that order. Thanks, Genji. Okay, I got it. Thank you. All right. Thanks for speaking Thank up. So I want to make sure that uh, you know, to the best extent possible, we don't lose people. Uh, you know, it's it's um, it, the best. The my best pacing is done when you guys communicate with me and tell me that I'm going too slow or too fast. I'm happy to go either way. Okay. Um, 
Is anybody else having trouble? I'm good. All right. We are going to continue. And we're going to do that by adding a custom JavaScript file to the app. So um, you should have already downloaded a uh, JavaScript file. Genji will provide it for you in the chat if he has not already. Uh, yeah. Need the file. There you go. So this file that Genji just dropped in the chat, that starts with uh, gist.github. And uh, Genji just dropped it again over here in the chat. You can download it straight away. So this is, a, this is a JavaScript file. What you're gonna do is you'll download it onto your machine and then in the same page that you are on, you'll click add file and you're gonna search for it on your machine and you'll add it and make sure that it is last in the execution order. Okay. AK asked a question, which visualization libraries does Kintone support? Could I do this with something other than AM charts? And Luigi, you got it right. Um, you can add any JavaScript file over here within a certain parameter. I mean, like, basically, if you try to run something malicious, it's not going to work. But if you're, if you're running it for, you know, under normal conditions, you, wanna, you want some, any kind of library, really. Um, you can you can set up to execute over here. So um, yeah, high charts is a good example. Terrific guys, I really appreciate you helping each other out in these in this chat. Come on. Now, once you have uploaded the file, make sure you click on that blue save button. It should be at the top left of the screen. And when you do, this is critical, click on update app at the top right part of the screen. There's a larger blue button at the top right portion. It says update app, click on update app. Cause all we've done when we've saved the file is we've saved it, but we haven't pushed the changes. To push the change, we have to click update app. which is, oh, I'm skipping a little bit ahead. This is where you'd be right now, updating the app. All of the changes you make will get pushed. Uh. And if you've done everything right, this is what you're looking at. So uh, it's this force directed graph, these little circles that you can drag and drop. And, uh, and they live right above your data in this app. I also want to uh, just call out that Will has given some other examples in the chat of other libraries that you could use that Kintone supports. This is by no way an exhaustive list. Actually, Will, could, Will, could you drop our CDN in here? So folks, if they really wanted to get excited about what they could put into the Kintone. Um, yeah. yeah, so Will just dropped a link that shows you like, all of the libraries that we host, sometimes there are companies that have security considerations. They don't want, um, you know, they, they, they don't, they're concerned that um, if you're linking to some external website that, uh, you know, maybe that site could get hacked and that, and that the code that you're linking to could, um, could get corrupted and uh, become malicious. So what we do is we host a whole heck ton of libraries on kintone.com. So that way, if you're on Kintone, you're linking to Kintone, we're the ones who are managing all of it. Uh, and that'll give you some sense of what you could play with over here. I love it, Bulbagraph. Um, they are concerned about security. They should make a native app. Dana, there's a valid point. There is a whole spectrum of security concerns over here. Um, I'll just leave it at like, Kintone is very secure. If you wanna learn more, I will point you in the right direction. Uh, and I can provide you with an operating and security document. Um, but in lieu of that, yeah, there's a spectrum of security that people are interested in. Hey, uh, who called out over there that it sucks? 
<laughs> no, not that. I'm saying, uh, like, what I'm doing right now, it's not going through. I'm called out. No, no worries. I get How can this we visualization you? tool to email to myself right, man. I, I, I click this link and I download it, the visualization.js, and then as soon as I send it to the email, every time it attaches, it's only attaching with a one kilobyte of data. It's not giving me the full file. And I'm like, dude, that sucks. <laughs> Isn't the file one kilobyte? I don't know. It's not letting me download it. I'm trying to download it. I thought you can, uh, I you just, email it to myself. You can send the guest link instead mm -hmm. and then open that guest I, link I in your. Uh... Okay, Genji, let me try that. Genji, do you know how big the file is? Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. The file should be very small. Yeah, that's what um, I'm figuring. But uh, yeah, as Will suggested, um, please type in this bit.ly short link at the computer that you're running the website and the code in. And you could download the whole uh, GIST as a zip file. And then from there, you could upload everything uh, directly. So you, you're not constantly emailing back and forth between the two computers. All right, let me try that. Cool. And Luigi just dropped a really valid, uh, valid tip for all of you who are concerned about security when you're linking to a third party, uh, third party uh, JavaScript files is you can, um, you can add the, uh, the integrity hash checking attribute on the script tag. Um, if that third party site supports it. And, uh, and a tip from Luigi um, for us, Will, uh, if we're not, it's not something that we're doing or have plans on doing, um, is to set up that kind of integrity checking on our side. I think it's a great idea, but I also have no visibility into, into what that would take on our side. But it's worth, uh, it's worth, it's worth a thought. And th thank you very much, Luigi, for, uh, for adding that in. All right. Um, how are we doing? Please let me get a show of hands. Are you seeing the visualization? Can you play with it? All right, John, Luigi, Ryan, Ramon, Day, AK, Arlette, great. I don't understand. Okay. Jason, Joey, how are we doing? I'm uh, still not I'm getting sure. this thing right. I, I, I get the process. I can see the oh, you can see the visualization? I, I can see it, yes. Okay, but uh, it's not moving. So, okay. Uh, I can see that one with the table, right? So, my, my question is this I also try to lock, uh, use the same URL for the uh, for this, uh, yeah, this sucks. Uh, for this application, so look like so this one is not public, right? So how can I make it public? I'm sorry, I did not understand the question. The, my question, my, my question is this one's the URL on top of like for my domain name dot kim tong dot com slash k slash two. Yes, That's the the website I created. But yes. look guys, like this one you have to log in, right? It's not a public domain. That's right. Yeah, how can I make it public? That's my question. Oh, that's a great question. So um, if you wanted to make your Kintone environment public, you gotta take a step back and think about Kintone's main use case. It's for internal teams to be working together. So if you want external stakeholders to be participating in Kintone, there are, um, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of different ways to include them in your environment, depending on the kind of access that you want to give them. Um, you might want to have them, uh, you might want to uh, buy a, a license uh, to give them a seat. You might want to hook into some of our third party tools to expose some of the data on a publicly available Sorry. website. Um, so, okay. and then there are a few other options as well. So basically the Kintao is designed for the internal use, not for the, uh, because for example, like I show the result, I want to publish this result uh, on my website. So that's not the, that's not Kintao can do. That's right. You would want to use a third party tool to expose either a certain um, a data set or, um, no, you know, so, 
So here are a few things that you could do. You could, you could, you could, we've got like third party tools that you could use to, that are like configurable that allow you to uh, expose the data or the graphs and a, and a clickable link. Um, we also have a fully okay. open REST API. Um, so you could pipe the data that you have in Kintone um, outside of Kintone to anywhere else that you'd want it to, to be. Oh, okay. So is the REST API is free or I have to pay? So what, what's, so I remember people ask about this question. It's, yes, it's a freely available REST API. So we have to pay, have to pay to get the API? No, no, it's a free, it's a free open API. Oh, free open API. So I can use the API and to include um, for the public viewing. Right? Exactly. So you would pipe and the data to, go ahead. Sorry about that. Yeah, another question is I also try to log in through my, my, my phone. So it looks like they said the mo uh, uh, Kintel mobile is available. So you look at, but there's no graphic, only see the table on my phone. Could you rephrase your question, please? Yeah, I also do the same thing on my phone. Yeah. Right? And uh, then I go to the same URL. And uh, then what I see is just the table. I don't see the graphic. Oh, that's right. The graph that you created is available on in the desktop environment only. You could there there is um there is separate because because mobile has different elements that it exposes. Um, you okay. want you you we, you can upload um, different JavaScript for the mobile environment. In fact, um, if you go back to that JavaScript and CSS customization page. Um, yeah. Let me yeah. jump back to it. Um, what you'll see is over here, even you'll see there's this um, upload JavaScript for mobile devices. So right now we're working strictly in a desktop environment. That's what it means when it says PC. Um, but you could um, you could create customizations that are specific to the mobile environment. Um, I don't okay. believe this graph specifically would be one of them because I'm not sure that this specific element that this this div that we're exposing in the desktop environment is available in mobile um but the the principle of it stands okay uh yeah you'll be uh, uh, we'll, we'll be looking through the code later but um for mobile you'll be specifying a different div uh that's for mobile and uh, since amtrots is responsive um the graph itself should show on the mobile as well if you set it up for the mobile Great. All right, Jas. Thanks for thanks for doing the work to catch up. Are we? Are we? How are we doing? Joey, how are we doing? Uh, <laughs> I'm over this. This shit does not want to go. All right. I just thought we... I was gonna download the file and put the file in, but it ain't letting happen, dude. Like I downloaded this from the link. I even made a new JavaScript file. Then I try to email the file to myself and download the file that I emailed and it won't let me do that. So now I'm on the other computer, opened up Visual Studio and I'm writing a whole new file. All right, well, if you need any assistance to catch up, go ahead and reach oh. out to, go ahead and reach out to Will, okay? All right, thank you. Okay, folks, let's go through the code. This is the interesting part. So we had three libraries that we set up at the beginning. Excuse me, that we that we ran first that came with the uh, with the library. The first was the core library for AM charts. Then there was the library for creating charts. There's a separate one for maps that we would use if we were looking to create maps, but we're not, so we used the charts one. And then there was a specific library that we used for the force directed chart. Um, then we added our own chart. And if you open up visualization.js, as I believe Joey is, uh, has already beat us to, look at that, Joey, you're all caught up. Um, then uh, this is what we begin to see. And so uh, let's, let's begin to break this down. Now, the first thing that we've got is you'll notice that there's this Kintone object. Um, this is essentially an object that we hang 
uh, a whole bunch of methods and events on for you to interact with when you're building your own client-side uh, executable code to run on Kintone. And um, there is a specific event called um, app.record.index.show. What that means in English is when you when the pay, when the in, when the uh, list view page loads, and then what we do is we're going to uh, we're going to call a method called get header space element. The header space element is that kind of blank area that sits in between that blue rectangle and um, your list of records. That's where we injected the uh, AM chart. And so what we did is we, when we see the list view, um, go ahead and get this element and, uh, and then um, create this new instance of this chart. And uh, you'll notice there's uh, this function uh, m4core.create. We're creating this chart and we're going to hook into the target HTML element space div. And then um, we're going to tell it what kind of chart we want to inject into that div. Okay. Then we're going to create a series for the chart. You can imagine a series as, um, well, a series is a chart. Like it's, it's a, um, Yeah, I think we could just leave it there um, for the purposes of this session. What you need to know is that if a series is a chart, then if you add multiple series, then the series will sit on top of each other as though multiple charts were sitting on top of each other. Um, we gave the chart some, um, oh, you know what, let me go back for a second. We gave the chart some properties uh, like a name, a maximum radius, a minimum radius. So we're controlling the size of these circles and then um, we want to log the event into the console. Uh, this is for our purposes. Um, and then push some data in there. To, um, to push the data in, you'll notice it's, it's actually pretty simple. What we do is we, um, we get the data that's already associated with the event. It's event.records. These are the records that are showing up when we enter that list view. And um, we're just going to map them from the, uh, the, uh, the, the array that they're in uh, when we get them to a, uh, a new array that has the name and the uh, size of the, um, the, the, I believe it's their gross revenue. Uh, and gross revenue is represented in a, um, you'll see where we see where we've got record dot text dot value and then record dot number dot value. So here's a little behind the scenes for you, okay? Um, when you create a field in Kintone, uh, there's a default, like a, what we call a field code that works behind the scenes. So when you, when you took, when you put, when you dragged and dropped that text field and you renamed it, you called it movie title or whatever you called it, the field code didn't change, but the name that the user sees changed. That field code was called text. Then there's a field, then there's a field we've got called, uh, I believe it's gross revenue, which is represented on the back end as the field code number. Now it's actually very easy to configure these changes. And you can see over here in the field settings, all you need to do is edit this, um, this little box of uh, this little text over here. You change it to some other field code and then your code would change as a result. So this is where you make the connection uh, hooking between the, the, what you can configure in the native uh, Kintone environment to what your, what your code is going to hook into. And then finally, we, um, we're going to, thank you. The field code is the identifier for each field represented as a string. That is a much cleaner way to say it, Will. Thanks for adding that in. And then we, um, we take her data and we connect it to the, uh, to the chart that we made by calling it, you know, series.data equals data. All right, that was a lot. Any questions? Okay, no questions. Please raise your hand if you are fully caught up. 
Luigi, John, Quasar, Day, Marlon, Ramon, Ryan. Great, 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 great. Yeah, actually, can you summarize uh, what you just went over right now? I'm a little lost as to where to begin here. Sure. Uh, who's asking the question? It's Dana. Dana, thank you. Okay, so um, let's start with what you understand. Where are you? Where? What's your? Where are you coming from? All right, so I've uh, I've got the bubble graph thing, and uh, now what? You you mean like you see the? Yeah, so I've done. You've done, done this. That I've done okay. that. Okay. Then we opened up the that visualization file that you downloaded. Okay. And we started looking at it and understanding what how it's doing what it's doing. You can click on the link that Genji just dropped, and you can view the code. Uh, it's just straight uh, in the gist. Oh, okay. I would also um, point want to point out that uh, the gist also has the slides as a PDF um, for when you want to go back or you miss something or use as a for your future Kintone projects. Oh, good call out, Genji. Thank you for that. Sorry, I was under impression that there was uh, more to add to the to the uh, Kintone app in this case. No, that's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, done. <laughs> okay. Yeah, what we just did was we unpacked kind of how did we get this behavior? We waved a magic wand, basically. Um, here's what you need to know about the way this code works. Kintone um, triggers Kintone events based on certain things that load or happen. And then what we do is we hook into those events. Instead of using like the browser events, um, we hook into Kintone's events since they are much more reliable. Uh, and then what we're basically doing is uh, once we hit a certain event called show the list view, we, um, we identify the target div and then we create an instance of a chart and then we define the, the um, uh, conditions and properties of that chart and we create some data and then we link the data to the chart. And then and it's so explained. it's I'm sorry. Um, sure. So it's not based on the uh, JavaScript event listener system. Correct. It is not based on the JavaScript event listener system. Kintone hmm. has its own series of native events um, as part of its API. And uh, and there are all sorts of reasons that we've done that. That frankly I don't remember all of them, uh, but they essentially have to do with your JavaScript listener events um, don't guarantee that they will be executed at specific times. And these Kintone events do. And if, what's, and if there's code that you're running that depends on a certain kind of order of page, of, of elements displaying in the page, hooking into the Kintone events will guarantee that um, those elements will be displayed when you need them. Does that make sense? Okay, so they're not compatible. You can't uh, make them work together. In you, you, could, you could add like, cause it's, cause this client side JavaScript code that you're, that you're uploading, you could, you could hook JavaScript listener, you could hook behavior into JavaScript listener events over there. There's no prohibition against that. It's just that typically people want to do things with Kintone and hooking into Kintone events offers a more reliable way of doing that because those events trigger, um, after certain elements load or before other elements load. So you've, you have a much more predictable way of um, triggering your desired behavior. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's sort of like a React hook then. It's sort of like a React hook, um, probably. My, I, I, I haven't touched React since ah. before they came out with React hooks. My, um, but that sounds like, that sounds accurate based on the very, like the three sentences I read about React hooks in the last six months. <laughs> Can I just uh, uh, point out one more thing? Please. As Will here. Um, the other advantage of using the Kinto native events is if you can see on line three, um, where it states the event, and after that it shows uh, the words function brackets event. And this, uh, this uh, event 
is an object that's being used later on in line uh, 21. It's, used, it's been used in line 19 as well, so you can ch uh, check your console for what that event object looks like. Uh, but it basically contains all the data that's been shown in the list view. So um, it has data of each row and the, uh, and the values inside each field of those rows. And for this workshop, we're basically cycling through all the data inside the event objects. And then we're taking out just the data that we need, which is the film title and the gross revenue. And we're placing that into an object and we're pushing that back into um, Amcharts series.data, which is like the data set that you need to set for Amcharts to show their charts. Mm -hmm. So it, it automatically maps CSVs is what you're saying. Uh, no, you'll okay. convert your CSV into a Kintone app. Mm. Once your CSV is converted into a Kintone app, now it sits as Kintone data that you can access essentially in, in three ways. One, the most obvious way is through the GUI, right? Like, oh, look, there's my list of, there's my list of records. Let me click on them and see them, right? So far, so good. The second way is, oh, through an open API, I make a call to a specific you know, endpoint and I say, you know, get me the data on this app and then you'll get that data, right? The third way is if you're in Kintone running client side executable code and you don't, you don't, you shouldn't need to make an, a REST API call to an endpoint. It should be available to you and like on hand in some way, which it is, it's attached to this events object actually. Okay. So so what I heard was that it, it maps it to some sort of uh, object model on the client side. That's right. OK. Very good. Yeah, that's Folks, a really interesting question from Luigi as well. Uh, Luigi, is there a maximum amount of data rows given the data row is in the event object according to Will? Um, huge. I don't uh, know. Yeah, if I can answer that as well. Yeah, <laughs> is that okay? ahead, well, please. Uh, so the app, the app itself has, a, has a, like a maximum amount of uh, rows you can put in. Um, and I think for the developer license, it's uh, 50,000 rows. Uh, and for the event object itself, so yeah, I, I said the event object contains all the uh, data that's shown in the list view. Um, the list view actually only shows a maximum of uh, 100 rows. Um, so if you click next page, if you have over 100 uh, records, then a next page icon will appear. And if you click on the next page, it'll the event object will contain the next amount of rows. And if you're working in a project where you want over 100 rows, there is another way to get you know all the records inside your uh, application, which is by uh, initiating Kintone's REST APIs. Um, so there's a very easy way to call REST API, uh, Kintone's REST APIs from within Kintone to get all of your records. But we've made it simpler this time, uh, just using the event object. Um, and I hope that answers your question. Yeah. For mine, it breaks at 20 rows. How do I fix that? What you'll do is on the right hand side, AK, there should be a place where you can um, choose, I believe it's the three dots. You go to these three dots and it'll, it'll say like, how many rows do you want to see? And you can choose like 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Ramon saying, it looks like the kind of thing where I'd look up your docs for how to set up a visualization like this and make my own file. For example, I could set up my own min radius and max radius. Yeah. Yeah. And we actually, we've got plenty of cool projects that you can check out in our docs if you wanted to set up a visualization like this or, or something similar. Great. Folks, great questions. Okay, any questions? All right, final part of today's agenda is calling REST APIs from Kintone. For those of you who skipped ahead and were asking about uh, cross-origin resource sharing cores, this is the time to tune back in. So we talked about public APIs and um, we had created our own data set, given it to you as a CSV and asked you to upload it. But if we wanted information from some external API and we wanted to bring it into Kintone, how would we do that? Seems pretty straightforward, right? Like, use my client-side code, call a server, 
get the server's response, use the server's response as data in whatever I wanted to do. And um, that model is to, a little bit oversimplified, actually, um, because you're running, your browser is running client-side executable code. And um, typical limitations in accessing a REST API are that um, your browser that's on one website cannot make a call to another website to get information. That's called cross-origin resource sharing. In other words, you're crossing to another origin. You're not at kintone.com anymore. You're at you know, google.com, and you're asking them to share resources with you. And that's typically prohibited. So if you try to do that, if you try to run your, your, your Kintone JavaScript code calling a server somewhere um, without, you know, with the, uh, if, if that server is configured as it typically is, it won't let you do that. It'll throw you a cores error. So um, now let's give you an example. We're gonna use the XKCD API for retrieving comic images. And what you'll see over here is we are uh, typing in a URL that's one of their uh, REST API endpoints. We're going to fetch that URL and then we're gonna to try to do something with it. And we are doing it from Google. And you'll see exactly like I'm saying, we cannot do that. We cannot be on website A and have our browser make some call to website B. The client is not allowed. And that's for a variety of security reasons. Uh, the one that comes to mind for me is that you don't want some kind of nefarious code on, on, a, on a website that you trust that's been hijacked, then hijacking your client and going somewhere else and doing some other stuff secretly. Something like that. Sounds like my computer, yeah. So how do you go around that, especially if you're using, uh, if you're using a tool like Kintone? Well, Kintone basically creates something, uh, it creates a proxy server. Um, and what that means in English is um, you tell Kintone to make the call for you. Kintone acts like, like a server at a restaurant. You're not going straight to the kitchen to talk to the chef. There's, there's a middleman who is taking your order and then going to the chef and making the, um, you know, making the call for you and then giving the, uh, producing the, returning the response. So um, with Kintone, there is, uh, you can call REST APIs through a method called Kintone.proxy. And what it'll do is it'll make the exact call that you want, but it'll do it from a Kintone server. So server to server communication is totally fine. And, uh, and then it'll return you, the, essentially the client, the answer that you want. What you need to know about Kintone proxy is it has this, uh, these parameters. It takes in the API endpoint that you're looking for. It takes in the method. Are you making a get request? Are you uh, making a put request? Are you posting? Um, it's gonna uh, take along any headers that you specify and any data that you specify. Um, and then um, it'll return a promise, but if you put in the, the last two parameters, then it'll return the information as a, uh, as a, as a, uh, a callback. Uh, Deny, you're asking, oh, is it an Nginx server? Um, what do you mean by that? Well, you can set up Nginx to do a uh, proxy server. Yeah. Great. So yeah, you could you could uh, have Nginx basically make calls on your behalf to another server. Sure. It, um, but to clarify, it is not an Nginx server. Nginx is like essentially you know low level software that runs on your server that allows it to handy way of of setting up your server basically the way that you want. VJ is saying there's lots of ways to get around cores. Absolutely. So let's take a look at an example over here. Okay. Um, and you can um, you can feel free to take this code uh, if it's not if it's not available in the in the PDF, then uh, you can you know grab this grab this deck and, and try it by yourself. What we're doing over here is we're going to make a call to the XKCD um, the XKCD URL, the one that we just tried from Google. But this time we're going to have Kintone Proxy take care of that information, and when it does then we wanted to display the resulting comic. Is this, well, is this the Little Bobby Tables comic? Yes. It is, it's my favorite one. Oh, it's an excellent, <laughs> an excellent uh, uh, comic. For those of you who 
Heck, why don't we do this? Raise your hand if you've ever heard of XKCD. All right, great. Folks, if you have not heard of XKCD, I am delighted to inform you that there is a crunchy, nerdy webcomic um, that really scratches the itch. And there are like a thousand of them. So if you ever want to burn a week, um, I'm not sorry that I've introduced it to you. For all the folks that raise your hand, thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, what you need to know about the way Kintone Proxy works is um, it's going to return a promise object and you can even use it with Internet Explorer. Uh, and it'll allow you to make your calls from the browser without being blocked by cores. Any questions so far? I like it. Good. We're asking questions in the, in the process. So we get to these checkpoints and you guys don't have questions. I'm okay with that. All right. So let's talk about what we've done so far. Well, we introduced you to Kintone. It's a no code, low code platform. It's very, very useful. If you're a developer and you want to build something quickly and then focus on like the, the more interesting parts of your project, um, Kintone allows you to do that. Uh, you can use it as a, as a front end for a, um, a privileged class of users. You could actually use, we haven't talked about this, but I do want to drop it, drop this in. You could use Kintone as a back end too. If you've got some, uh, some other front page, you know, some, some front end work that you're doing, some pages somewhere else, and you just need to like drop information in a database and pull information from that database with an open free API, um, you can use Kintone as a back end database. So it's very flexible. We talked about creating a Kintone app. Uh, it's very easy to spin up and it is extremely configurable and customizable, especially if you're somebody who knows how to code. We uh, displayed an AM chart on Kintone. We showed you how to upload JavaScript files, how to link to existing JavaScript files, um, and touched on how your uh, JavaScript files can interact with data that's stored in your apps. And then um, we talked about how to make REST API calls from Kintone. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, I do them in sets of seven. Um, thank you, Will. Uh, so, if you want to make REST API calls from, <laughs> if you want to make REST API calls from Kintone, uh, let's say you don't have a bunch of data on hand, but you want to pull it from some existing data set, the way that you do that is by uh, using Kintone.proxy, and that'll have you bypass the uh, the cross origin resource sharing errors, the cores errors. Okay, so why do you, would you want to use Kintone on your projects? You don't need to set up or maintain a server. You can easily create databases with the GUI so that you also can kind of hand wave the back backend. Um, if you were looking to do some work for a privileged group of users, you could also uh, hand wave a lot of the front end and then just customize a lot of what's already there. Um, the front end can utilize the, the, the database data and you can call uh, REST APIs from the Kintone front end to avoid cores. So here are some ideas for what you might want to do next. Um, one thing that I touched on is, uh, well, why don't we start with this? If you want to try out more visualization projects, there's a whole bunch of cool stuff that you can do with AM charts. You can link to different libraries. You can pull da data from various other um, open APIs and you know remix it and, uh, and just you know build something real, real quick. This could be very useful for your portfolio. Another thing is uh, if you really wanted to, to get down and dirty with a fun project is like learn how to implement a Kanban uh, view with Kintone. Total, almost entirely out of scope of what we've talked about today, uh, but that could be a really fun project to work on. We also have things that are called plugins, which are basically like packaged customizations. So for users, remember, there, as a developer, you're in a privileged position uh, where you can code, but we're typically, you know, we, we are we are surrounded by people who don't know how to code. Um, a, what a plugin does is it allows you to to basically take this special customization that you've made and generalize it uh, so that a a uh, somebody who's who doesn't know how to code, somebody who's allergic to technology, can configure your customization without ever needing to look at uh, text textual uh, interface, textual coding interface. Just uh, some ideas for you. 
Um, if you want to take a look at various places to retrieve and store data from public APIs, here's a list of those public APIs. This is available on GitHub. I should star that. Um, I'll, I'll do that after our session today. That's a great resource. And um, if you want to use Kintone as a backend or, and retrieve data via Kintone's REST API, just spin something up on Heroku. I say just spin something up on Heroku. For some of you, that's a project in and itself. So take that on as a project. Spin something up on Heroku, connect uh, that to a Kintone database. And it looks like Will's got a really uh, cool tutorial uh, breaking down how to do that. If you are stuck, you have any challenges, um, there is a Kintone Developer Community Forum. Uh, it's on the uh, Kintone Developer Network. You can Google Kintone Developer Network and also uh, Genji, just like perfect timing, just dropped it in the chat. You can also hop onto Stack Overflow, which is you know everybody's favorite place to get tips on how to code. Okay, any questions? All right. I got a question. For yeah. Like the visualizations and stuff like that that we can utilize and implement. Um, so the, this is like since it's like it's kind of like an automated process, right? You kind of just like set up like all the parameters in the sandbox, and then you could pretty much just hand it off to the client, and they could log in, right? And they'd have access to tools right off the bat. Is when that kind of how it is? Kind of like. Go ahead. Well, I, I guess I'm trying to just get that distinction because like I mean the service seems pretty awesome I, I kind of like how it's like all in one encompassed and you can kind of like get everything uh, hooked together pretty simple totally so it depends on who your client is right if your client yeah. is, is a typical business user you know your coding is being done behind the scenes ultimately yeah. they just want to you know have a tool that's going to make them make it easier for them to do their work and so as a as a typical business user client yeah everything's like pretty easy and accessible. Um, as a, if you're a developer and you want to build something for your client, a lot of it's already done for you. You know, then you're building, you know, you're building piping or you're, you're making some UX changes. Um, or maybe, you know, you're building a plugin, which you would involve some, some uh, single page application. To, uh, let me, let me read okay. which, which would involve Forget what I just said. If you want yeah, to build that, that made sense though. That made sense what you said. It's it's kind of like just like a tool to use in the tool bag. It's just right. you know something for us to pull out and you know makes things easy for us, like ready to go. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Look, you guys as coders, you've got there are a lot of places where you can be focusing your time and attention, as as some of us were talking about during the break, right? So you know, do you want to focus your attention on like building a database from scratch? Yeah, there are certain times where you definitely want to do that. And there are also times where you don't. So you have Kintone as a tool to use it when you don't, you know? What if you just, what if you just wanna like spin up some, like some charts and graphs, you wanna mix them up with some data, you wanna see that everything is working the way that you want. Um, you wanna do it in a lightweight database. Yeah, like Kintone's a great option for that. Let's say even you wanted to build a, a plugin that you maybe you wanted to resell to our user base, right? go ahead and do that too right there's a lot of options for you um, Sweet. so really this is just this is another place for you to play any other questions about kintone the tool cool how about any questions about um rest apis am charts Client side versus server side JavaScript. All right. Well then, uh, I want to thank you for your participation. Uh, and we're gonna don't don't go anywhere because uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Christine. And uh, and before I do, I just want to say again, thank you to Genji, thank you to Will, thank you to VJ uh, and Christine for uh, putting all this together. Um, and thanks to, to viewers like you, uh, who have really made it a joy 
uh, for us to, you know, just train the next generation and, and train folks who are the current generation and like up in their skill sets. So guys, like, thanks for making this an awesome call. Take it away, Christine. Thanks for the great presentation. Um, you did a great job. Um, and thank you everyone for joining this event. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And you guys were very interactive. I really appreciate that you guys kept um, up with everything that Nim was saying and really made comments and interacted with him. So we made it for a fun meetup group. Um, and we definitely want to hear from you. So we do have a post event survey. Um, the link is on the screen or there's a QR code there. So either way, um, but we do want to hear back from you. Please take the post event survey. Um, if you take the survey, you are entered automatically into a raffle. I will pick a winner for a $25 Amazon gift card and we will announce them in the next day or so. So please take the post event survey. We want to hear from you. We want to know how, um, what your thoughts are about this event. Thank you so much, Christine. And then we also just got a real quick question. What are some other examples of apps made with Kintone? Um, so in a, in, in a sales team, apps might include like a, a CRM or a, um, uh, a customer surveys or uh, an activity log uh, to track sales activities or uh, an invoice tracker. Um, for uh, an HR team, they might want to track their applic the, uh, trap job applicants or track uh, available job listings. They might want to track uh, how much uh, paid, like what are, what are people's paid time off for the year. Um, you might want to track um, your, uh, if, you're, if you're in the market and you're buying and selling stocks, you might want to track your, uh, your purchases, your acquisitions, your buy and sell dates, um, your open orders. Uh, the whole point is it's a Lego kit. So it's anything that you think of any kind of thing that you want to track. Um, and what, what's really great about Kintone and aside from being able to, um, you know, have the collaboration baked right in. So it makes it really easy for teams to, um, to collaborate on workflows. There's also like a, like a business process management aspect to it. So as take an invoice, for example, it's being passed around from one person to another. Um, that the right person, the right assignee is getting notified at the right time. So what that allows for is um, uh, like, a, like a, a smooth workflow. I hope that answered your question, Quasar. Yes, thank you, you're welcome. All right, folks. Um, Please uh, continue to fill out that survey. Uh, if, you've, if you liked what you saw today, give us, give us some, uh, you know, give us, give us appropriate feedback. If you didn't like what you saw today, give us some appropriate feedback too. We really, it matters to us. Um, we, wanna, we wanna make sure that we, we, this is a really high quality presentation for you. Uh, Vijay, should I turn it over to you at this point? Uh, yeah, so I mean, I guess um, you kind of pretty much like, you know, covered most of the main points here. Um, you know, I, I do want to kind of just give everybody one more chance to just ask any um, final questions um, or even just give like final comments, um, you know, because, you know, this is a meetup group, first and foremost, and, you know, we want to just make sure that people properly, you know, say whatever is on their mind or network, you know, at the end. I really dig how flexible it is. I mean, if you want to code, you can code. If you don't, you could just work with the built-in tools and the GUI. I mean, that's pretty cool, you know, to have that uh, flexibility to kind of go either way because it really opens it up to basically extend what you can do with it, you know? Granted, if you just use all the tools that are out of the sandbox, you know, the code basically opens it up to extend that, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Get, the, get this guy an invitation to all of the rest of the presentations we do. <laughs> well, Joey is one of our, um, you know, hidden treasures of the group. So, you know, like, um, mm -hmm. I always love that. Uh, thank you. Show up. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. divine in me sees the divine in yeah. you. Yes, sir, man. <laughs> yeah. They had, you know, they had me, I think, like a software engineer. What can I say? I love coding. Yeah. Hey, we've got a we've got a question come in from Ryan on the chat. I want to flag it for everyone. 
Um, I'm still considered a beginner. I'm interested in hackathons. Anyone recommend anything? Yeah, actually, so I want to I wanna open up this time, uh, and I really for, for not limited to these two things, but one thing is if you've got recommended resources, please go ahead and post them. The second thing is if you've got any kind of um, job uh, requests, job openings, um, anything around uh, work stuff that you want to you wanna share, please go ahead and take this time to, to do that. I'm always working on algorithms. Anybody wants to jump in on that, because I swear you can never be too prepared with it. Data structures and algorithms, man, very important. For hackathons, if you want to check out um, hackathon.com or bemyapp.com, you can find more hackathon and events there as well. We'll actually be hosting um, a, a more of a Kintone series later in the year. So please be on the lookout, check those websites out, and you can learn more and attend more of these events as well. Yeah, and definitely these are all great feedback. Um, you know, we'll also make sure on JavaScript LA side that uh, we have more um, interesting things, including hackathons available. Uh, so yeah, if you do have an idea and you want to like pass it by me, just feel free to reach out to me. Awesome. We got another question coming in. Uh, earlier I was talking about, we were, you know, previous, previous uh, uh, trainings that we've done, previous workshops we've done on, on promises REST APIs, where, where are we doing that? So um, we've historically delivered those uh, training workshops to a group called Women Who Code, which is open to women and men, anybody who is you know, interested in, in coding and, and bettering themselves. Um, women Who Code San Francisco is where we've typically done those. Um, but, uh, and I don't even wanna, I don't, I don't know if I'm getting a little too ahead of myself here, cause I've got a whole team that works on this stuff and I'm just shooting from the hip, but, uh, you know, maybe there are some opportunities for us to do more of that kind of stuff with, uh, with JavaScript LA. Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you guys based out of the Bay area? I am personally located in the Bay area. I'm in out of Berkeley, California. Um, VJ's in the greater Los Angeles area, Genji and, uh, and Will are actually joining us from Tokyo, Japan, uh, oh, where it's a uh, nice. morning bright and early for them. And uh, Christine, Christine, I don't remember if you are still in Idaho or if you've come no, back in to Portland the Bay Area. Now. I'm actually in Portland, Oregon now. Oh, you're in Portland. Yeah. So we're <laughs> we're all move. over. Made the move. Yeah. Made the move. Good for you, Christine. <laughs> and that's actually a good thing. I, I just kind of want to like follow up on that, right? Like, um, you know, even though this group is called JavaScript LA, you know, for a long time, it's been more than just LA. It's, <laughs> it's kind of like we should really call it JavaScript International because like, you know, we have so many people now kind of joining us from like everywhere, especially through online. So, um, you know, that's why I stress like networking, you know, going back to that point about like, what do you do if you don't have a job or you want to get a better job or whatever? Um, it's, you know, just networking through like things like this because you never know who you're going to talk to. And um, there may be like opportunity around the corner. So uh, we want to just continue to expand as far as we can with lots of great partners like Kintone. You know, there are, um, I, I, I said this a few times today, I'll say it again. You know, there are a few uh, groups that we've done presentations with where it hasn't clicked. There are a few groups we've done presentations with where it's been solid. Then there are a few groups where it's just, we, we really have a lot of fun. And uh, this is the second time that we've, we've worked with you guys and it's, it's a ton of fun. I mean, everybody who's attend, you guys are, you guys are talkative, you've got your videos on, you unmute yourself, you participate, you ask engaging questions. Um, we, I am pretty comfortable not just speaking for myself. We love it and we love to, to provide that for you guys. So, so thank you for being awesome. That's awesome, dude. That's how it should be, man. You should be having fun. Everybody <laughs> should be, right? That's how we learn. <laughs> man, yeah. this and stuff's dry if you don't make it fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Luigi is asking, uh, which algorithm practicing website do people like the best? Leet Code, uh, Code Chef, Hacker Rank. I like Leet Code. Leet Code's pretty good. So those are all, they're all pretty good. top. Yeah, those are all pretty top. Um, I think Leet Code tends to be pretty good too because uh, they give you the explanations. Um, you know, especially if you don't know how to solve a problem. Um, I, yeah. would, I would say though, like, you know, take it with a grain of salt, right? So I know a lot of people kind of, and I wasn't going to say this, but like, I felt like maybe saying it now. Um, 
data structures and algorithms are okay to know, especially if you're going to go and try to work for, um, you know, a Fortune 500 company and, you know, just do software engineering. <laughs> Which, <laughs> Can right? I let the cat out of the bag? I'm in with Apple. <laughs> yeah. well, but, so I'm on that 24 <laughs> seven. Okay. Well, yeah, let, let me kind of like also just, you know, finish the train of thought, right? So you're going to end up learning a lot about like link lists, and arrays and binary trees. And um, you're going to learn about like, you know, um, recursion and all kinds of things. These are great things to know. Um, but at the same time, you know, I kind of feel like, you know, it's not industry, like it's not what the industry is doing, you know, unless you're, like I said, again, you're trying to be a software engineer, like in just working as a very generalist, right? Like you're trying to solve engineering problems. But for people, you know, who are doing JavaScript, it makes a lot more sense to like work, you know, on latest technologies in JavaScript, like React or, you know, React um, hooks or, you know, working with APIs like AWS, Kintone, you know, all these things, because if you can, sh like the way you're going to get paid, right, that's actually kind of what it comes down to is based on like how much expertise you can show in a certain area. Um, so if you say, oh, I'm a Kintone expert, then that actually has more weight than saying, oh, I'm a generalist and I only know data structures and algorithms because everybody, you know, is learning that in colleges, right? Um, and it's still, you know, you can do leak code and I don't, I'm not going to say it's bad. It's great. It's great to do that. I even do it myself. Um, but I would just say like, you know, it's more important to focus on actual job skills because a lot of these things like data structures and algorithms have already been solved. Right. So they're not as valuable anymore um, to a lot of these companies, unless like you're going to reinvent like, you know, the way Amazon or, you know, Apple does like, you know, some binary trees <laughs> structure in their, their back end, like way inside, you know, like, and you could, you could, and then you could say, oh, I'm really good at this. You know, I'm really good at, you know, fixing back end problems and, you know, um, pay me 500 grand. Right. If that's your goal, then go ahead. Right. There are certain people who are, you know, specialized, but ultimately that's kind of my point. You won't get paid unless you actually specialize. Um, if you try to be a generalist, you're actually kind of hurting yourself and limiting like your potential that you could make. You only have a short time to work. So it makes more sense to just kind of like focus hard on like specific areas and then just get really good at that and then charge a lot for that. Hope that makes sense. That's very true. A lot, a lot of solid points right there. My, my whole research, my whole take on that though, is like, even with like the most basic jobs, like not even necessarily a fortune 500 company, but you know, maybe somewhere in that mid territory, you're still going to have to test, you know, to some extent for your job and it might not necessarily be on like algorithms, but they give you the foundation of like problem skills on how to like break your problems down into like manageable problems, like manageable sub problems that you've already solved. So then yeah. once you do that, you can reconstruct it, you know, to basically pseudocode your way through whatever the challenge is or the question that they're giving you, you know, it's just kind of like tools, you know, little skill sets, you know, cause you could have a really strong portfolio and that'll carry you to a point, but then, you know, what's going to happen when they throw you that dry erase board and they say, Hey, okay, now <laughs> I got a basic algorithm for you right here. And then you're going to look at this algorithm and you're going to freeze and then you're going to completely choke up. And it might be something real, real simple, like recursion. Maybe they want you to write a recursive function and they want to see if you know how to do that. But if you don't basically uh, expose yourself to these things and get like comfortable being uncomfortable, then when you get put into that hot seat, it's kind of hard to finish and cross that line and clinch the deal and get the job, you know? Like, that's just from my own personal experience. I've been at like all the jobs I've had, I've had a test for to some extent, you know? I mean, yeah, they look at portfolio, GitHub and all your repos and all that too, but they still want to make sure that you are like, have a solid foundation of, you know, like you were saying, like hash tables, working, you know, link lists and, you know, these have very like important, um, how can I say, I, they're like just ways. tools, yeah. you know, they're just tools. 
But I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. And the efficiencies, that, yeah. that, that's where it's like hits home. It's that efficiency and that, uh, that I think, understanding of time, you know, space. Yeah. So I think, Joey, what we can do is we can have like another, like what I'll do is I'll probably put together like a meetup talk about that. And we can have like, you know, kind of a discussion around, you know, what's really important for coding interviews. Cause I get that, you know, ultimately, you know, and I want to make sure I'm respectful of everybody's time. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to get sidetracked. No, 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 no problem. Com- yeah, I like no talking problem. to people, man. What can I say, man? It's not every no day problem. I get to talk to cool but, people, man. But ultimately we'll, we'll try to have like a different meetup about that. And I think like, you know, um, we can have more like questions geared towards what it takes to get a job, you know, stay in the job interview or, um, you know, harder positions and what's, you know, what do you need to do at each level? Um, but ultimately, you know, I think I still stand by my, my thing, like, you know, yeah, you want to study for a little while and be good at interviewing. Ultimately beyond that, you want to like specialize. I think that's more important. Definitely. Okay, I'm going to hand it back to Nim. All right, uh, Nim's going to Nim's gonna call it. So folks, thanks for being with us. Uh, thank you for your time, your attention, your energy. It's been a pleasure. Uh, if you are on Pacific time, good night. If you are closer to Tokyo time, good morning. And uh, <laughs> Bye, take much. care and until next time. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you for your time, man. Yeah. It's good to meet up. Thanks. Okay. Good night, guys, and good morning. Japan. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks for joining.